Welcome to the podcast, Let the Prophet Speak. Today we are studying Amos the Prophet Amos, chapter 5a, the first portion of chapter 5. This is Saul Weinreb, the host for your podcast. I will be splitting chapter 5 into 5a and 5b because the chapter is somewhat longer than usual, and I would like to keep these podcasts short. The um, In the last chapter 4, we read about how... Um, no matter how God treated the people, whether they, whether He gave them everything they needed, and gave them, uh, you know, a good economy and good crops and lush fields, that they rebelled out of arrogance, and then when He tried punishments, they kept on rebelling. And no matter what He did, they never got the message. Um, and the prophet ended by warning them, and and at telling the people, prepare yourselves. There is hope, and if you treat God properly. And if you lose this arrogant path, then he will treat you this way as well. Today, um, now one of the things we noted in chapter 4 was the use of sarcasm, where God said, uh, go ahead, bring all of your, your um, tithes and bring all of your sacrifices and bring all of your worship. Go ahead, bring it all to those houses of idol worship found in uh, Bethel and Gilgal and so on. So, um, so um, today, um, uh, there will be some a response to that in today's uh, in today's uh, podcast uh, in five. So let's begin. Five uh, a verse one. Shimu et hadavor hazeh. Listen, all of you, listen to this thing, to this matter. Asher anochino se alechem, that I, and this is the prophet speaking as God, that I am going to say about you, I am going to speak about you, I'm going to um, raise up uh, and 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 cry about you. Kina, a a kina, a lamentation, or a, a kina is a usually a poem or or a song that laments and cries over something terrible, like we say on. On the on the fast day where we mourn, on the ninth day of Av, we say keynote, we say lamentations, things that mourn over the loss and mourn and, and mourn over the suffering. Kina Beit Israel. This is a kina regarding the house of Israel. Um, this also could be the prophet speaking of on his own uh, and saying that that I am going to say this kina, this lamentation. Nafla lo tosifkum. This is the verse two. Nafla, she has fallen, and she, and I'm going to translate as follows: She has fallen in such a way that she cannot get up. Bitulat Israel, the the virgin of Israel, the the young maiden of Israel. Nitesha al admasa, she has slipped upon the her, her ground, or nitesha also could mean she has been left alone upon the ground. After she has fallen, Ain Mikima, no one is coming to help her get up. Now, um, this this uh, the translation of Naflalo uh, Tosif Kum. I I took this translation from the Malbim, and and based on the context, I believe this is the best way to translate this term. And I'll explain. So so because it seems like Nafla she has fallen in such a way that she will never get up again. That there is no hope for deliverance but it that be that is clearly contradicted by the entire um book of amos actually but this chapter itself where amos continues to tell them what to do in order to in order to get up and 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 predicts a future where there will be redemption so clearly he doesn't mean that they will never get up so what he means is naflalo to sifkum she has fallen in such a way that she can't do it on her own anymore and this fits very well, and you'll see why that fits very well. And the first reason why that fits very well is, if you recall, in the first chapter of this book, we talked about almost turned to all the nations of the world, including Israel, and said, three times God will forgive you, but the fourth no longer. And we spoke about this in the first chapter, that the meaning of that was that once people repeated and repeated and repeated the sins in such a way that it becomes okay, that the, the society doesn't even think of it as something terrible anymore, or they cynically think it'll never change. 
that's the point where the society has no longer any hope to get up on their own. Something has to happen, something has to change from outside the society in order to do that. And Amos is really reiterating that same idea here. Now, Flolo to Sifkum, she has fallen in such a way that she can't get up. And we'll see several things in today's readings that, that continue to emphasize this point, that the society has reached a point where the society cannot no longer do it on their own. Where they, and, and that's why the end of this, this verse is, in Mikima, there is no one coming to help her get up. And that's what this means. This means that it's at a point where the society itself is so sick to the point where it can't fix itself. It needs something else. Because so says God, this is verse 3, This society is going to be uh, have, suffer significant destruction to the extent that if a thousand refugees leave the city, only a hundred will survive. And if a hundred leave Tashir Asara, only ten will, will survive the Beis Yisrael for the house of Israel. God is saying that this, this society, as it stands, needs to end. The house of Israel, there will remain that 10%, according to these numbers. There will remain. We also had that idea of a 10% in Isaiah, that God will leave a tenth. A tenth will remain. Um, so we see that idea of the tenth representing the remainder of the people after the destruction. We see that repeatedly throughout the prophets. Um, so here we have um, this, this idea that, again, reiterated by Amos now several times, the, the idea that the society has gotten sick to the point where there is no longer hope for the society on its own. But then he goes ahead and says what the hope there is, what can be done. Because so says God to the house of Israel. There is a way. Dear Shuni, search me out. Search me out. And then you shall live. Search me out and you will, and you will live. There is a way out. Be altid rishu beisel, and don't go searching in those places of idol worship, those places where people worship themselves, the creations of their own hands, their own wealth, their own strength, their own arrogance. Be gilgolo tovo, and don't come to Gilgal, which was also the place where they had idol worship. Uver sheva lo tavoru, and don't pass over Be'er sheva. Again, places where where they had this this type of idol worship set up. Ki hagilgol golo yigla. Those places will be destroyed. The Gilgal will end up, and it's just a play on the word Gilgal. It's Golo Yigla, using that term. If you flip around the letters a little bit, it means they will go into exile. Beit El, and Beit El Yiel Oven, and Beit El will become nothingness. Um, this is. Uh, um, so don't go there. Now, this is a response to the sarcastic portion that we read before where God says, go ahead, go to Beit El, go to Gilgal, do all those things. God is saying, now, I didn't, obviously, you understand that I didn't mean to instruct you to do that. Don't go there. That's not what you should be doing. Don't take that path that you thought yourselves on your own would somehow get you somewhere, but rather take this path. Search for me and don't search there. Again, God reiterates in verse 6, Dear Shuet Adonai Vichyu, Search out God, and then you shall live. That's the way you will survive. Because you cannot do it on your own. But with me, with God, you can. You can be successful. Because if you don't, The house of Yosef will be successful only in the, in the, in the way that a fire of destruction is successful. And that fire will eat up the entire house. And no one else is going to come out to, to put out those flames as they come to destroy Beit El. Again, uh, no one else will come from somewhere else to, just to, to help. And this Ben Yitzlach Ka'ish is a reference back to, again, that first chapter, the same, where we express that idea that the society has come to a point where, where it can't fix itself. And, and, and each time, God ended by saying, I will send fire, the fire of destruction. And fire is something which does not discriminate. It burns everything in its path. And what's the problem? What is it that you're doing wrong? Amos always, just like all the prophets, uh, with the exception of Yoel, always points at what the problem is. What is it that you're doing wrong? You have turned 
justice, real justice, into a la'ana, into um, into a joke, into into something that, that you can scoff, or into it could also be translated as 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 rotting wood. But basically, you turn justice into nothing. You made justice into a into a nothing. La'ana is a, is a also a um a um a uh, bitter bitter plant. That's what you made mis justice into utsudaka and righteousness, which is something that is necessary for the society above and beyond straight justice. La'aratini kho, you threw it to the ground and left it there, and didn't leave it as part of your society. And there's no justice. When there's no righteousness, the society is over. And then God says, O say kimo oksil, I am the one who created the stars of the sky, the constellations. Kima and Ksil is, is, are two of the main constellations, Pleiades and Orion. I can flip the morning and make it into darkness. I can make daytime darken into nighttime. I can call to the seas and make them pour in a tsunami over the, over the face of the land. And who is that that can do that? Who is he? Adonai Shemo, God is his name. And God says, again, reminds us of his power. Now this contrasts a little bit with the um, end of the previous chapter, uh, which talked about, uh, which in which, uh, I'm just going to go back and read that for a second. Um, well, that was uh, verse 13 in chapter 4 where God also said, Who am I, God? I am the one that can make darkness into, into morning. And over here, it's emphasizing the power of God to punish. Over there in that verse, it was emphasizing the power of God to bring, to bring things to light, to make things, to, to make things better, and to reward. Again, Amos is flipping back and forth and saying that God responds to us. He can punish, He can reward. It depends on our actions. Verse 9, Hamavlig showed al Oz. Now, showed is destruction. Oz is one who is, who is strong, it's, you know, a powerful military force. The showed and destruction, al Mivtsaryavo, will come upon these, the, the, uh, the fortresses. This, this verse is talking about God is saying, You think you have power, you think you have military power, you have fortresses, you have weapons, and so on. I will destroy those things. To me, those things are nothing. This word hamavlig is very difficult to translate. Um, uh, most of the traditional commentaries explain mavlig means to strengthen. I strengthen the destruction that comes upon the powerful. In hamavlig, linguistically and in modern Hebrew, generally means to restrain, which doesn't really fit well into the um, into this pasuk, into this verse. To restrain destruction on the on the strong ones, it just it just contradicts itself. It just doesn't fit into the thing. So I'm not sure if that's the proper translation. Another one that I saw uh, in the uh, JPS translation is Hamavlig showed one who hurls destruction upon the strong, which would makes a lot of sense, but um, that may be the most correct of the possible translations. And again. Why am I throwing all this strength? Let's move on to verse 10. Son u basha'ar mochiach. Because the people, they hated the one who stood in the city gate and tried to give them rebuke and tried to tell them the right way. They hated the prophets that came and brought the message of God and tried to teach them. Vidover tomim and those who spoke purity, those who spoke of, of, of living properly the way God wants people to live. They hated him, they detested him. Lachain, therefore, Yan, because Boshaschem al Dol. Um, I mean, this word Boshaschem al Dol means you, you, somehow you abuse the poor. Boshaschem is a word which doesn't really show up anywhere else, at least with this spelling. So, because we know the Hebrew letter Shin is often interchangeable with the Hebrew letter Sin, many, most of the traditional commentaries assume that. This word comes from the word bosaschem, which which is uh, similar to what we find in Jeremiah 12, chapter 12, verse 10, 
where boses means to destroy and um, that you that you trample upon the poor. Uh, the JPS translated it as, as an imposition of, of power over the poor, such as uh, imposing taxes upon the poor. Umas as barticumimeno, and you uh, take from him, and th- that the JPS translation kind of fits with the context of the next phrase. Umas as barticumimeno. How do you trample upon them by taking by taking taxes from him, onerous taxes from him, taxes that he cannot afford, in order to enrich the rich. But tegozis benisem, you build these houses of stone, and how do you build them? Of course, by by oppressing the poor, by oppressing others. And therefore, you will not live in them. And you use those proceeds to plant beautiful vineyards. But you will never have a chance to drink their wine. Why? Because I know that your sins are so great. And your sins are so powerful and so strong. What does that mean? So powerful and so large. They're so powerful and so large in such a way that you've corrupted society to, the society to the extent that it cannot turn around. So for you guys, you people, you society, you um you 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 um you you are are uh you torture and make suffer the righteous people. You take bribes when when you're deciding in court, you don't make decisions uh, just of justice who's right and who's wrong, but based on the bribes you make your decisions. Evionim Bashari too, and in the gate where these where these supposed uh uh, courts are judging they 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 lean against the poor people because they have no money to pay the bribes the system is stacked against them therefore hamaskil those that are smart and this is a more probably one of the most tragic verses he they say he don't the people that are smart and understand what's going on they keep their mouths shut they don't say anything he ate for all he because it is a time of evil this is the saddest thing when you get to the point where those that do understand what's happening, that see it and understand it and know it, they're afraid to speak up. And when they're afraid to speak up, the society has reached the point. Remember we said to a couple of verses ago, the people hated the people that spoke up and tried to rebuke them. The people that were dover tomimi ta'evu, the people that spoke of purity, they hated them. And they didn't let them talk, so they stopped talking. Once those people stop talking and there's no longer anyone teaching the proper path, that's when the society has reached the point where something has to happen from outside. And so that something is never good. And again, Amos says, there is a way to get out of this. Dear Shu Tov, instead of searching out those the, the, the arrogance of the idol worship, instead of searching out the arrogance of your own strength, Dear Shu, and the arrogance that you can bring about with your own power and wealth. Rather, dear Shu Tov, search out good. That's what you should do. Be Alrod, stop searching out evil. Laman in order that you can live. Because the society that's corrupt will end in death. If you want to end in life, build a society that's dear Shu Tov. And God will be the same way. And God will be with you. Just like you said. Just like you said, just like you wanted, the people wanted. Not just I, God, said that that I will be with you and you will be with me. But the people want God to be with them. The way to make that happen is by being with him. Sin ura, the prophet continues to tell us. While you search out good and not evil, you should hate bad, hate evil, hate corruption, hate this bribery, hate this lack of justice. tov And love good. Look inside your heart and make your... Put your heart in the right place. But if you if you love good and you hate evil, you will help build a better society. And how what will you do first? You will set up good justice, real justice in the gates, justice that's appropriate, justice that meets that 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 treats everyone equally and appropriately. Then, if you do that, maybe God will have mercy. Um, God, the God of the world, will have mercy on the remainder, the remnant of Joseph. Joseph is always a reference to the northern kingdom, the upper ten tribes, to whom the primarily the words of the prophet are directed. Thank you so much for studying chapter 5a. Looking forward to completing chapter 5 with you in the next podcast, 5b.